up everyone? Hope all is well. Today I'm going to show you to do a sweet pull through transition effect. You can use your own clips or you can use the stock footage provided by Colin Ross. The link is down in the description. This was actually because of a live stream request that someone put in when I did a live stream and thanks for the idea. <laughs> download those clips you'll get two specific videos one will be a green screen which I just dragged in here another will be a video of this girl who puts her hand out forward and grabs Amir's hand and pulls him forward towards the waterfall now the first thing you have to do once you drag these in is you actually since he grabs her hand with his left hand in this video, he's holding the screen screen with the left hand. You're going to need to actually just come over here and click flip. That way it makes sense. Then you also want to drag the cursor to right when she's about to reach out. And I basically just drag these here like so. Delete the audio. Make sure both these are enabled. Make sure they're the same length. Highlight both of them. Right click and new fusion clip. Now you're going to come down here, click on that clip and click on fusion. Now this is when the fun begins. The first thing that I always like to do is select the median one and median two, which is by default, just the names that DaVinci gives video files or any type of media you drag in. First one is obviously the girl. So I pushed one, put her in viewer window one, which is over here on the left. I'm going to type girl and then the green screen will obviously be named green screen. Great. Okay. So again, first things first, you want to make sure you have the right layers on top of each other. So green is foreground. Yellow is background. So we want the girl to be on the background and then put the green screen on the foreground in front of her. Great. Next, we want to key out the green screen. If you click on green screen and hold down shift spacebar, Type in Delta Keyer. Come over here to the eyedropper tool, select the green. You can come and click on this icon here and move the threshold up and down to adjust to your liking depending on your environment and your specific scene. But for these two clips, just the default settings work actually pretty well. So now that the key is done, we're going to have to do some masking. So the first masking step is going to be masking her hand just a few frames as she comes out of the window here that we've green screened. And then we will move on to the step two, which is masking out his hand, which is going to be a lot more time intensive. But first, let's just start with her hand. So we're going to click on Delta Keyer, come here to this polygon spline tool, blind tool, masking tool, whatever you want to call it. And it by default loads right here, but we want to make sure that we attach it to the garbage mat arrow, which is underneath. And what's cool is that since now we have both these viewers showing each clip, we can come in here and what we do over here will affect over here on the right, but it'll be easier. So we don't have to like disable any clips or, uh, you know, disconnect anything. We can actually just specifically see the girl clip in the left window by selecting that clip and pushing one, which I did in the beginning. And what I'm going to do is just draw a mask around her fingers. You have to make sure that the polygon is selected and we're going to come and click. And the closer you get to her fingers and the more points you do, the more accurate it will look. So it just depends on how much time you want to mask out what you're doing and how detailed you want to get. You can get away with a pretty, um, pretty good mask by just doing a bunch of points. Also, if you click, and you want to make it somewhat of a curved line, you can actually click and hold and see how that changes. You can actually make nice curved lines. It's kind of different. It's, it takes a little bit to get used to, but it works really well when you have surfaces and things that you need to give like a nice curve to. So I'm going to do that now. So now you can see over here in the right window how the Masking has started and she's starting to reach through the window. You can pick 
any frame that you want, but I started with this frame. You could start with her hand a little bit further, but I started from the very beginning. And also something we wanna do is move the mask out of this frame because obviously her fingers are not through the paper yet or through this scene. Again, what's really cool is that if you wanna work in this window or this window, it doesn't matter. You can move the points and it will actually work as if you were just working along in either window. Another great thing is, is that we didn't have to do anything as far as keyframes. The program will automatically know that whatever you move for that specific frame is going to be what it is. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna move all these points out. And that's another tip real quick. If you just highlight and drag, you can select multiple points at once. That way you don't have to go in there and select each individual point. And for this first frame of when I'm gonna start the masking, I'm making the mask all the way out. Then I'm gonna move it forward a little bit more and then I'm gonna do the next frame. We've only masked just a few frames, one, two, and then after that, the hand actually underneath kind of comes up and that's where a lot of the masking is actually going to occur now. And since her hand is pretty much covering the top of this portion of his hand, when we go to mask out the bottom half, most of her hand is on top of it. So when we do the separate mask, we won't have to actually do her hand. We only have to pay attention to her thumb over here. So make sure you mask out a few more frames of her thumb and then the rest will take care of itself. Okay, great. So from this point on, I'm going to turn off the level of the mask here. So I'm gonna come up here, keyframe the level, come over here and I'm gonna turn that off because after that, I don't want that mask to affect the mask underneath. Okay, so now that we've done her hand, we're gonna do the next hand, which is coming from underneath. And it starts right here, if, as you can see in the left viewer. And we're gonna mask out his hand all the way up until the point where he gets pulled through the frame which is right about there. So this is where the next step of masking comes in. So let's go to where his hand basically kind of shows like a good shape, the midway point here. And we're gonna come back over here and click on the polygon tool again. It will automatically just default drop in between these two. And we're gonna come down here and start masking out his hand. So do the same thing here. And what I tend to do is sometimes go on the inside of people's hands or just the things that I'm masking because what you can do is actually go over to the right hand side and there's soft edge and border width that you can adjust to kind of blend what you're masking and if you go in and out with the border width and the soft edge you can kind of adjust a good looking mask and not have such a rough looking final product so let me do this again real quick. I'm also selecting just a bunch of points here because I know that his arm will come into play. And I want to be able to have enough adjustment points to make it look smooth. So that's the first part of the mask here. As you can see here, that's where his hand starts to come in. And this is also somewhat of a rough masking. I've already done this before, so it's pretty tedious, but I will do it again for you guys and show you how to do the next few steps. The next thing you want to do is go backwards and select all these points and make sure that his hand is properly masked here. We can get rid of this finger since it's not in the scene yet and then go back one more. I'm using the arrow keys, drag all these points, get that out of the frame. That way, when the next frame comes in, it's properly masked. Now, this is what I was talking about when her hand comes into contact with his hand. Once we mask out his hand, hers will be on top and it will look good. Let's do frame by frame. Here's the next frame. Now, as you can see in the right viewer window, when I select the median out, the masking works really well. It actually works hand in hand with each other. Pun intended. We're gonna move on frame by frame. 
I'm going to show you how I just mask out his arm. And then I'm going to show you how to actually initiate the pull through effect. Once you get to the point where you think she pulls him through, you have to basically mask all the way up into that point. And you can select your media out and kind of see how far you need to mask. So if you watch from the very beginning, reach in, she pulls you through, and that should be good. So the next part is getting the motion blur and this clip here where he's holding the green screen to kind of move backwards, essentially. And she's going to be pulling you through into the card. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this window up so I can see what I'm doing. If you actually click on Delta here and hold down shift and push spacebar, you can type in transform. And what that'll do is it will automatically drop a transform node down in between the Delta here. All basically all the work that we've been doing in between that and the girl. If you want to keyframe the movement of when she pulls you into the frame, you can go to right where she starts to pull on you, like so, right about there. And you can keyframe the size of when she pulls you through. So pulls you through right to there, right? Maybe I can explode this up like this. See if that looks good. And so say if you want to adjust the look of that, right? It's kind of very robotic looking. You can click on that transform node, come up here and click on spine and select the node that you want to adjust. And then come over here to where it shows the line here. And you can click on it on either point and you can actually adjust the curves. So it's kind of more of like a uh, a really quick, kind of like it gets energy. Woof. See how that works? Let's do it more time. Great. So let's see if we can make this look a little bit smoother. I'm going to pull this open like that. And I'm going to pull this back. Just kind of watch it. And I kind of want it to be a little bit quicker. So I'm actually going to come back here and then let's see, have it be really quick. Cool. Okay, so another thing that we can do now is do some motion blur and we can keyframe motion blur while she pulls you through. So I'm going to click on the transform node, hold down shift space bar type in blur. So I'm going to select this directional blur. And what's cool is I can select if it's linear, radial, centered, zoom. So I'm going to try zoom. See how this looks. See if I change the length of the blur here, it starts to blur the layer that is basically, it's kind of like adding the effect of that she's pulling really quickly through. So I'm going to animate when she pulls you through. So right about here, she grips the hand. I'm going to keyframe it. I'm going to click on that keyframe and it's going to zoom really hard right up until about there. I'm going to basically crank up the length to, let's see if we just go all the way, all the way to one. There. And what's cool here is that you can also zoom in here and change the way that that is affected. You can make it ease in and out. If you hold down command in scroll up and down, you can zoom in and out and change the way that this effect works. So let's see if this looks any better. One more time, she pulls through and the whole frame zooms past. If you like videos like this, please like and subscribe, turn on notifications. I did this video because someone requested it in one of my live streams. And so I really appreciate the feedback and the ideas and all the great things that we're doing here. So until I see you in the next one, have fun.